Uh, my name is Makbul. Makbul. Uh, Makbul in Riyaz. Are you Muslim? No, Christian. Yeah. You see, because But, the names today means nothing. Yeah. You know, I tell you, most deceptive. You know, most deceptive. Yeah. I have come across names. Major Nasir. You think he's a Muslim, and you're talking about a Muslim, but he's a Christian. He is the Adu Allah, Adu Akum. The greatest enemy is trying to steal your children, but you think he's your brother. Ahlan wa sahlan. Go ahead. Okay. Makbul in the Riyaz. Makbul. Hmm. Yeah. Sir, when you opened your talk, you opened with derogatory remarks regarding those three gentlemen. A man of your stature, do you think it uh, behoves? What rationale do you have talking about a fellow man like that? Then also. Well, wait, 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 wait. wait. Yeah. You ask the question. One question at a time. Please, if you're going to deliver a lecture, I won't remember what no. you said. No, you made a comment. Let me respond. Yes. Then you can make another comment. Okay. Is about my tone, about my voice, about what I say. Sounds offensive. I says, you know, whatever I'm talking is insipid, insipid, tasteless. There's nothing in it compared to your Lord Jesus. Compared to Jesus Christ, the veritable Son of God, according to you, God in on earth, how does He speak? He said, "You generation of vipers, you snakes." He's talking to his people, the elders of his people. You wicked and adulterous generation, haram core comb. He's talking to his people. You hypocrites, you fools, you white sepulchers. Am I right? Am I quoting correctly? Right. Look, compared to that, Ahmad Bida. Compared to that, I don't know how many marks you're going to give me for virulence. You know? How many? Compared to Jesus, zero. zero. Right. Next question. Okay. I read in the newspaper the other day. Only during this week, somebody called, supposed to be a Muslim scholar, said that uh, Saint Paul is Satan. Uh, I don't think uh, any Muslim scholar or yourself would call anybody, uh, any man from any religion whom we honor, or they honor, as one of the saints or as one of the apostles. Uh, you build Now, cost. shall I answer that? Look, some Muslim scholar. Mm -hmm. I am not doubting your, your veracity. But what the Christians are telling my Prophet, you know, 60,000 books have been written against the Holy Prophet Muhammad. Do you know that? 60,000. <laughs> Let me read it to you. This is your publication. This is your publication. Mm -hmm. This is your publication. Listen. Look. This is Mother Basilia Shilling. This woman is writing, Christian woman. Allah or the God of the Bible? What is the truth? Mm. This is your Christian publication. Mm. Now listen. This Molvi, whatever he said about Saint Paul, is nothing compared to what you are now telling us about my prophet. You see? He says thus the two figures, Muhammad and Christ, are the greatest contrast imaginable. Jesus represents love and peace, whereas Muhammad stands for hatred and strife. Hush, please, please. I don't want your help. I don't need your help. Please. <laughs> need your help. <laughs> Muhammad, he, uh, Jesus, he is the lamb. Who oh, Jesus is the lamb? Very lucky guy. Bakri bachka. He is the lamb. Muhammad, however, stands for violence, having led wars. Campaigns on behalf of the supposed message from Allah, supposed message from Allah. Jesus is the embodiment of sacrifice. Indeed, sacrifice was the essence of his life. He himself became the essence, uh, the lamb that was slain as a sacrifice for the world. Muhammad lived for his self-realization. Please, man, don't want to horrify people. Waste your time. Look, Jesus more than a prophet. This is what you're doing among the Afghan refugees, the Christians. Here, people in trouble, maimed, crippled, amputated. There, you take unfair advantage of them. Look at this: 15 Muslims of the Mujahideen. They tell how they found forgiveness, reason, new life in Jesus Christ. How did they do it? Huh? And the priest was saying, "We don't go converting people. Who's doing this? Huh? Angels from heaven. Who's doing this? Look, look at this." Okay, sir. You speak about evangelizing. Um... Look. The Great Commission, you, 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 so you and the Muslims. You means the Christian. You, this is the Great Commission. What, what he says? Look at this. On the way to the cross, your ship, good ship, Dulos, Logos, going and harassing my people all over the world. There, there are a hundred books here. 
what you are doing to us, what we have done is God, what is my witness, is really nothing, is insipid. You see? So now you are behaving like a, a, a virgin, a little girl, you know, like a little girl who has been unjustly treated somehow. When the Christian, what have you done? What did you do to the people in the Philippines? What do you do to my people all over the world? And you are talking like lambs, you know, I said, look, we mean no harm. You conquered the whole of Africa. You conquered my nation here. This subcontinent and you enslaved us for 150 years. No? You Christian, no? Look, there's too much here. What is your question now? Tell me what no, is your question. The question is, I, I would request the just, uh, you gentlemen to kindly let other body allow. Yeah, I'll just... Uh, no, no, this is not a session of debate actually. No, sir, it's not debate. It's just a question and I'll move away. Uh, in, uh, in Quran, the Prophet said that uh, if you don't understand, consult the al Kitab. And then he referred to Torah, Zabur, and Anjil. If, if it was changed, then the Prophet would have say, uh, you, said... You find, shh, 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 please, don't waste time. Find this, and I'll deal with it. Come, sit down on this side here. Give somebody else a chance. No, Give him the Quran. Okay. Give him the Quran. I, I don't know the text. <laughs> it's one of the most controversial questions of the ages. Who is Jesus? Is he a good man? Is he a prophet? Or is he, as Christians believe, actually divine? Well, meet Mike Lacona. He's founder of Risen Jesus, a Christian organization in Virginia Beach, Virginia, and co-author of The Case for the Resurrection of Jesus. And here's Shabir Ali. He's founder of the Islamic Information Center in Toronto, Canada, yeah. and author of the book, Is Jesus God? The Bible Says No. Now, Shabir, as a Muslim, how is it that you view Jesus? Who is he? You don't consider him to be divine. Uh, I consider him to be the prophet and messiah of God, born of the Virgin Mary. He performed many miraculous deeds. God raised him miraculously and we expect his uh, supernatural return. Uh, but he is not the son of God, he is not uh, divine in any way? And no. Okay, Michael, now you're making the affirmative claim that Jesus is indeed divine. Now that's an easy claim to make, but what evidence do you have that he believed that and that he proved it to be true? Hmm. Well, Lee, scholars have established that within ju uh, just a few years of Jesus' crucifixion, the early Christians were regarding him as divine, despite the fact that he had been crucified. Now, what on earth would have led them to this type of a belief, a belief that was so strong that they were willing to die for it? We have historical evidence that Jesus claimed divinity and rose from the dead. When someone claims to be divine and rises from the dead, we should believe him. Shabir, how do you respond to that? Well, I feel that uh, Mike is putting words into the lips of Jesus, uh, saying that Jesus must have claimed that because the disciples believed it. Uh, to, uh, to address the first uh, point, there is nothing recorded in the Gospel showing that Jesus clearly affirmed his own divinity. And second, there is evidence in the Acts of the Apostles and elsewhere in the New Testament that the original followers of Jesus did not actually take him to be God. Okay, Michael, those are important assertions mm -hmm. there. Uh, did Jesus believe he was God, and how do we know? it would seem that he hadn't Good read question. the New Testament if he's going to make the statement that the New Testament nowhere has any place where Jesus claimed to be divine. It's filled with those kind of claims. But I think what he's probably referring to are statements that can be historically verified or for which we have good evidence. For example? Well, for example, you've got Mark chapter 14, verses 61 through 64, where Jesus is before the uh, Jewish leaders and the high priest says, are you the, the Messiah, the Son of God? And Jesus says, Yes, and you will see the Son of Man coming on the clouds of heaven, that's something in the Old Testament that only God does, and seated at the right hand of power. In other words, he's claiming to be a co-occupant of God's throne. Shabir, has he convinced you? <laughs> no, I don't think so, because he's referring to the trial uh, of Jesus before the Jewish Sanhedrin, right. and this is reported variously in Matthew, Mark, and Luke. Uh, and uh, in, in Matthew and Luke's uh, versions, we have it that Jesus uh, did not actually affirm the title. He said, you are the ones claiming that I am, it, it, in essence. And to say that Jesus comes on the clouds of heaven proves that he is uh, God himself, that would be to say that God could not do this for one of his creatures. So I do not think um, that arguing from silence will make Jesus 
Jesus God, it is clear that to affirm Jesus as God involves uh, a, a logical self-contradiction, it involves a contradiction with the divine scriptures, and it involves also a, a religious problem. Now I want to return you to that passage uh, from the trial before the Jewish Sanhedrin. The Sanhedrin asks him, uh, are you the Messiah, son of the living God? Now, and, and it says that Jesus said, I am, in Mark's gospel, but in Matthew and Luke's account of the same episode, Jesus says, you say that I am. Hmm. And unless you can first establish the actual words of Jesus, you cannot build yeah, uh, say, a reasonable uh, commentary am, on that. that now, am. it's okay, better to Shabir, say what does he say right after that you say that I am? He says, you will see the Son of Man coming on the clouds of heaven and seated at the right hand of power. I mean, these so you are, have to decide, are you, saying, are you saying that his divinity is based on his saying, uh, I am, or his saying that he's coming on the clouds of heaven? First of coming all, there's nothing clear. Coming on the clouds of heaven, seated at the right hand of okay. power. Well, here I'm saying that God can do that for any of his creatures, and that would not make the creature himself God. If God calls up a creature with Jesus him to his throne. Jesus is claiming to be a co-occupant of God's throne. Hmm. Okay, good uh, debate going on here. I believe Jesus is God. Oh. No, I don't believe Jesus is God. I believe there's a separate. Um, I believe Jesus is the Son of God. I absolutely hmm. believe that Jesus is God. Hmm. I don't think Jesus ever claimed to be God. I think probably he was uh, sort of like a pop star. Pop star. Pop star Jesus. God Jesus. Son of God Jesus. We're back talking about Jesus. So is he divine about as Jesus. Christianity Man. claims or just a prophet of God as Islam claims? Now, Shabir, Mike's been referring to New Testament records that are much closer to the actual life of Jesus than the Quran, which Muhammad recorded some 600 years later. So why should we consider the Quran to be a better historical record when it's so much later than these New Testament accounts? Okay. Well, the Quran does not claim to be a better historical record. The Quran claims to reaffirm that teaching which is there in the earlier historical record, namely the Gospels themselves. And it calls upon the people of the Gospel to judge by what God has revealed in the Gospels. And when we look at the Good Gospels, response. we see that Jesus throughout was referring to himself as the Son of Man, which means a human being, that he had human limitations, he did not know everything. He said of that day and hour, no man knows, not even the Son, but the Father only. Uh, he said, I can of myself do nothing. Uh, I do only as the Father has commanded me. Throughout, Jesus is deferring to God, and in fact, he falls in his face and he prays to God. All of these are human attributes which the Quran affirms as clear evidence that Jesus was a prophet, he was a human servant and messenger of God. Okay, Michael, that's, uh, those are some very good points that the Quran talks about, refers to in the Gospels. How do you look at the matter? Well, it's how Christians have looked at it from the very beginning, that Jesus had two natures, a divine nature and a human nature. So simply, he had these limitations in his human nature while not in his divine nature. Uh, you, you must have it such that Jesus is completely God and completely man at the same time. That is like saying that something is a square circle. You cannot be both because to be human means to have limitations. To be divine means to have none. You cannot be limited and unlimited at the same time unless you're schizophrenic in which you have two different personalities here. Okay, Michael, Michael is Jesus, Jesus first, schizophrenic? Let's, let's answer that question. <laughs> well, no, I mean, he was completely human in his human nature and he was completely divine in his divine nature. And this is pretty clear throughout the New Testament. But when we come to the Quran, what we find is a Jesus that um, is quite different than what we find in the New Testament. It's a Jesus who comes out of the womb speaking and preaching. It's a Jesus uh, who's part of a trinity that includes the Father, Son, and Mary. It's a Jesus that we find in the Gnostic Gospel I think you have, misunderstood the, you have misunderstood the Quran here because the Quran does not say that Jesus is part of a trinity uh, that involves uh, God, Mary, and Jesus. The Quran refutes well, the belief of those... Well, that might be a those, certain interpretation of it, but... Uh, the, the Quran refutes the belief of those who uh, claim this. Uh, but uh, what the Quran shows clearly is that Jesus cannot be part of a trinity because no such thing as a trinity exists. That God is one throughout the Old Testament and into the New Testament. The word Trinity does not exist in the Bible. This is a later idea. Well, that neither does theology, at. Shabir, but we both believe theology is real. I mean, listen, look, what we have of the Quran is this. We've got a book that's written 600 years after Jesus, fifth hand source at best. Um, it's written in a different country, a different culture, in a different language in which Jesus lived and spoke Yeah, Michael, you're missing the point because one doesn't need the Quran to affirm that Jesus is a human being and a prophet. The Quran, by affirming that Jesus is a prophet, is not saying something new than what Christians already believe because the gospel showed that he's a prophet and Christians, despite believing that Jesus is God, also affirm that he's a prophet. So on that, Christians will agree with the Quran. Right. Shabir, Shabir, let me ask this then. Where, where did this idea that Jesus is God come from? 
Well, the idea that Jesus is God is something that evolved over time. We can see in the pages of the New Testament itself and Acts of the Apostles that people very easily in the Greco-Roman world took people for gods. Shabir, I want to tell you, I've written a 300-page book on the evidence that convinced me as an atheist I've uh, read it. that Jesus did claim to be the Son of God, and he proved it by returning from the dead. And so my last question to you, and we just have a moment, is what would you say to Christians like me who are absolutely convinced by the evidence that the evidence supports those claims? I would say that you have to start by looking at the logical problems with claiming that Jesus is God and then interpret the scriptures in a reasonable way that does not uh, give rise to these logical problems. Okay. To say that he was God and man at the same time is logically self-contradictory. To say he is one of a trinity is also to introduce yeah. another logical contradiction. Okay. You see, one day I was invited to a Christian school to speak and it was a girl's school. All girls school, okay. So I went to speak to them. And the first question they told me is, why do you have a beard? Why do you have a beard? So I said, what do you mean? They said, no, these are Talibans. Talibans. Hmm. So Allah put it in my mind. This was a pure Christian school. You know, they had uh, idols that they have, little pictures and portraits and so on. I said, you know, to be very honest with you, we follow the prophets. And you know, I don't want to use the Prophet Muhammad's example because you don't believe in him. We are talking now to Christians. But I want to tell you, when I walk in the streets of Harare, Harare is the capital of Zimbabwe, where I come yeah, from. Zimbabwe. When Harare. I walk in the streets of Harare, the small boys, they say, Jesu. You know what is Jesu? Jesus. Say, there is mm -hmm. Jesus walking. Mm -hmm. But when they see your priest, they don't say that. Mm -hmm. Are you following what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah. When they see your priest, they don't say, there is Jesus walking. I said, but why? The reason is, we follow Jesus as well. I did not see Jesus without a beard. Anyway, I saw him with robe, and you drew the picture. I don't even believe that that is the proper picture, because we are not allowed to make those pictures. But you drew the picture. According to your picture, I, am, I have got a beard. I look closer to him than any one of you. <laughs> so they were quiet. So one other girl thought she was clever. So she said, but what about your women? Why are they also covered? You cover them. You know, this question comes up all the time. So I said, because we follow the Mother Mary. Finished. <laughs> closed. <laughs> Topic closed. Topic closed. Our women are closer dressed to what Christianity teaches than the Christians themselves. We are purer in Christianity than the Christians themselves because look at the dress code, look at the morals, look at the conducts, look at how strictly we follow the Ten Commandments, look at how we would like to you know, oh my stop God, certain things from happening thumbnail and from so one on. of my videos. And every little while they find it creeping in. The church sometimes will allow homosexuality, they will allow, it changes, they change it in order to get more people to follow. With us, even if no one is following, the deen will remain and still there will be people who will follow.